Yeah, yeah, but we're here. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I hope you guys got your uh, stuff rolled up, ready to smoke, dab rigs heated. I know this one is. I'm getting ready to, you know. This show's going to be a dope one. Lots of guests. Uh, special dab time segment. Ooh, get ready. Um, yeah, you know, one minute pre-show. Uh, shout out to everybody in the chat. I see you all in there. You know what I mean? That's uh, 419. And it's 419, so there's the show's about to start. Peace. Andrew, press record. The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the producer and do not necessarily reflect those of Cannabis Life Network, POT TV, Cannabis Culture, or High Times. What's going on, y'all? It's me, Craig X, and the place to be. Studio 710 is 420 here in the West Coast, so light them if you got them. Welcome to episode 167 of Expert Joints Live. Appreciate y'all toking up and tuning in. Yeah, not much of a pre-show. Well, a share link was not linking. It was just being there, being problematic. But thanks to our good friend, Andrew. We're here. We're making it happen. Uh, for episode, like I said, 167, joint 126. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All starting to add up here, jeez. Uh, anyway, uh, since we last spoke, I did the episode 35 of Fridays over there at saveonradio.com. Jeremiah Vandermeer was there. We talked all about 420 and it was dope, which you can check the replay on over at the Fridays page over on expertjoints.com. Also, the replay is up on tv.hightimes.com, as well as if you have the High Times TV app, you can check us out over there. All the shows over there, including the latest chronic cooking video, the smoothie, uh, uh, it was a creamy kale smoothie that we did last week as well, too. So that's all over there. Check them out. Support that. Support everybody. And speaking of supporting things, mm-hmm. The, I'll pass this off for a second. The, we'll get to that hand in just a minute here. Uh, the Stolby Sisters, you know, Stolby Sisters, our homegirls there, high-end dinner series. They've, uh, they've got an event coming up uh, Saturday, Saturday night, uh, known as the Chronic Cinema Club, uh, with St. Patty's Day being right around the corner. The movie is the cult classic Leprechaun course immortalized in the Wayne's World skit. Yeah. But anyway, a um, bunch of vendors, a uh, bunch of people from the cannabis going to be there, a whole lot more including a, a movie which is important. Ah, there you go. And tickets are available over there on the Ticket Bud site as well too. You can check those out. Just 20 bucks. Come on down, smoke some weed. And uh, I had an idea. Thanks to the friends over there at Crop King Seeds, which yes, yes I am in one of the commercials. Yes. <laughs> There it is. In comes the joint again. Yes. Uh, Crop King Seeds is helping uh, put on the event. Uh, and from Crop King Seeds, I got a big bag of stuff to give away here. There's like shirts and hats and seeds and trays and basically. And there's two tickets to the event from the Stolby Sisters, from over there, the Chronic Cinema Club. So the first person in either of the uh, YouTube chats that I would see, the Pot TV and the Expert Joints YouTube chats, if you're over in there, and you're from Vancouver, and you are the first person in the chat to be like, hey, I can go, and actually be able to go. I don't want you to say you can go and you don't actually can't go, because I'll leave this waiting for you there with your name at the front door of the event. So first person who can come, there's two tickets to, to up on offer for you there. Hell, even over at the CC Cannabis Culture Facebook page. 
Uh, you guys let me know who can come on through the show here. And you get this big bag of swag thanks to our friends at Crop King C. I gotta say it like that because that's how Charles Zuckerman used to say it. And that's my homeboy. We were in the commercial together. Um, doing it. Anybody here? Well, yes, Scott. You could win that shit if you are here anywhere near Vancouver. You can come to the show. It's a, just as simple as that. I can grow. Impact photography. Uh, looks like you're the first person to say you can go. Well, then there you go. Max, pack photography. Congratulations. You got two tickets to the Chronic Cinema Club and a big old bag of swag from Crop King Seeds. You know, they got all these logos, shirts, and all the stuff there. So, shouts to the King for holding it down there, and shouts to you. This will be at the door with your name waiting. Boom. With that, uh, yeah, where, don't, don't we, Andrew? Do we have a sound effect for applause? Now, 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 do you have one with a groan? Uh, or a boo? Yeah, can you put up a boo on one now then? Oh, fuck. <laughs> boo! boo! We gotta find a better solution for these sound you, effects, you need, Andrew. You need a sound effects uh, keyboard right yeah. in front of you. Todd, make that happen. Go to Best Buy, get a keyboard before the end of the show. Let's go. Ah, uh, man. Anyway. We'll get it eventually. One of these days, all of them will line up. Right, subscribe. In the meantime, go ahead and subscribe. Way to change the subject. Go ahead and subscribe down here to the, uh, to the uh, YouTube channel. It would be great. And also, if you want to give us a, a thumbs up, that would work as well, too. Yes, new graphic. New thumb graphic. Look at that. Look at that. One too many knuckles, but whatever. Or not enough. You, you know what I mean. Um, give us a thumbs up. Follow this week's show. On the show, the one and only DML, David Malmo Levine, in the place to be. And, and his beard as well, too. Uh, I'm not sure who I'm more excited to have here, David or his beard. They're both pretty good. Um, also, the, the big puffa is, will be here, uh, not doing a live performance himself, but he's arranged in a live performance from a guy named Ian Cromwell, a.k.a. Cromunist. Which is, I love that. That's a great name. Uh, How I Roll, also a uh, new edition of Expert Selections coming up as well, too. And uh, we're supposed to see the girls from Products by Sec. We'll see if they make it through before the end of the show, but that's eh, all right. We'll come back to them and their, their talk of their events and what they've got going up if they come through in a minute. If not, we'll circle back to that because in the meantime, I got in the bud cam over here some weed to roll. Mm, I'm going to put this one in. Some of the gelato. From the folks at Weeds, check out weedsgg.ca if you want information on what we've got going on here and what we're, what we're about to get into. And if it's something you might want to get into too, that would be your choice if that's what you want to do. I couldn't encourage you to do that. But, you know, up to you. Uh, Bud Cam, I'm just over here looking at it thinking, ooh, it's so pretty. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Here, there we go. Here, Bud Cam. There we go. Where's a good spot? A nice little spot. There. Hey. there we go. Bud Cam. Weed's doing it. A little bit of the gelato in there. Going to roll this up here. Get on with the show. You know, it's not just me sitting around just flapping my gums for an hour. And it, well, kind of is. Um, all right, but before I get to that, thanks for the reminder, Andrew. There is a Weed's event coming up um, next weekend, the 22nd. they got a glass event coming up. There's, and there's also uh, an art show coming up that we're going to hear more from Malmo that I'm sure... It's one big happy family, but if you want to go check that out, support all these events around town, uh, check out that Weeds event coming up as well. And uh, <sighs> can we finally get to it? Um, if you want to check out things while I was mentioning Weeds and events, they've got this new thing called the, the Vansterdam Comics. It's a big book here by Bob High, brought to a buy in part by the folks at Weeds. And my guest today, the one and only, David Malmo Levine. Hey, how's it going? Good brother, you? I'm stellar like the stars. Mm, thank you for being here, sir. Uh, thank you for smoking me up in the green room, but it's almost the green out room because that stuff's potent. What was that? Uh, got uh, Al the Alchemist Swede. Oh, man. Al has some of the best weed around. He was, uh, he always smokes on that fire. I think there was some Gorilla Glue that went around there. There was some, uh, the Hashmiri that went around there. That guy, wait, I'm, he's not here right now, is he? I need to take a temporary time out and just chill and not smoke any more that week because I've achieved the ideal level of highness and I don't want to go too higher. Love it. I also have some CBD dabs kicking around. If you oh, yeah. Later hey, well, man, so yeah, let's, some of those let's do that. That'd be fun because CBD allows me to get higher because I can smoke more weed Perfect. without getting dizzy or anything like that. I had a sensitive 
uh, sensibility for the last 10 years. But now that I'm taking uh, CBD on a regular basis, I'm like, Smoking like a champ. My man, well, that's uh, in the fridge in the yellow envelope that we could send someone in there to get. Maybe we can, in my office there, that's we'll get that one out for you. That's good for novices and old folks and the infirm that are more sensitive to THC than the regular folks. Well, A, people who are sensitive to it, plus also B, I haven't dabbed before, and yeah. I'm a little worried and scared. You want to get the mechanics down. You want to yeah, get yeah. used to it and shit. Great way to start with the CBD. There you go. Uh, advice from my man. Maybe that'll be in the version two of the comic, but I gotta say, hey, also, congratulations and thank you for not only making the book, but uh, congratulations on the book. Woohoo, yeah, 10 years in the making. We're having a uh, signing, uh, book signing tonight at Flat Spot, uh, which is the uh, skate shop, the longboard shop on Pender Street. I do believe it is uh, a 112 East Pender. Very and nice. And then we're also having a black light party there. We're gonna be showing off some of Bob's art that I have colored and uh, it is black light sensitive and glow in the dark. The cool things about these things is they act like a night light and after you turn off all your lights they still glow for about five minutes which is really kind of cool because <laughs> you get into bed without stubbing your toe or you can look into the eyes of your loved one before you both drift off to sleep. <laughs> Wait, pulling out all the stops at these things. Oh, yeah, check out the black well, light. It sort of works here because I got such intense lighting here from this, but you get the gist of it. You can see that it just pops under black light. Now, I have a really powerful black light with me, and it charges it up real good. Because well, it, uh, people, well, please show that I one. I got as well. two more. Okay. Two more to show. This one, which is all about how, you know, pot is monopolized throughout history, which is kind of a, still a relevant topic today. And. Finally, just for fun, fight for fish. Because there's like all this bioluminescent nature. And it looks so you, cool. You lose you when you go forward on Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. All right, there. How about that? Perfect. Okay, good. Yeah. Anyway, so you get kind of the gist of it. There's others uh, too. And, and uh, we're just kind of finding that with both the neon paints and the glow in the dark paints, you mix those two together, you get something new art form that. Uh, Glee on the dark. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Anyway, if you want, that's happening tonight, uh, Thursday night at uh, Flat Spot between 6 and 8 p.m. So right after this, I'm going over there. Lovely. Well, thank you for getting the plug in now. Now, let me get to the subject matter at hand, which is the comic book. The comic book is awesome. 420-page illustrated comic book that I'll show you guys more in a second here as I get my fingers out of this, off of this joint here in a second. Looks at the history and the people of cannabis, particularly in Vancouver, yes? Yes. Uh, it's told from a Vancouver perspective. I'd say, you know, there's 30 pages of background drug history to mm. put you in the right context. Uh, there's over 16 different activist stories in there. There's uh, over 100 pages on CIA drug trafficking, so you can find out about the heroin and cocaine markets as well as the pot market. And then kind of there's uh, eight pages at the end that sums up the whole comic book, nutshells it, if you will, and allows you to use it as a, a weapon of drug peace and, and context. Oh, yeah, there's uh, about 36 pages of Supreme Court constitutional challenge and, and my response to their decision in there as well. So so this is incredible. I mean, it's it's all this artwork, page on page on page, of all like all this incredible Bob High artwork that he's he's done and illustrated. But you you wrote all this as well too, right? I wrote all of it. And, well, but say Bob wrote about uh, uh, five percent of that, and we have contributions from other people. But I kind of edited it and mm. put it all together in in that form and designed it. And then uh, I did like about 5% of the art touch-ups on that thing, and Bob did all the art and, and all the coloring, too. And, of course, the fine folks, Donna Carroll at Weeds, who helped feature in the book, oh, and yeah. on the back, co back cover there, made, uh, made a lot of it help happen as they well, too. They produced the comic by buying the originals and then paying for the print run. If it wasn't for Weeds, uh, that wouldn't be uh, even in existence. Well, shouts to Weeds, and if you want to get yourself a copy, you can also check out the Weeds GG website. Go on over there, go to their shop page, click on through there, and get yourself a fancy damn comic over there from my man Melmo. Fantastic, yeah. And a cannabis culture and, and other places as well, I'm sure. It costs you 60 bucks, but you get 420 pages of the best pot history and drug history. The most subversive stuff, too, like how hemp became overregulated is also in there. Uh, the beginnings of Hemp BC and what that was like. Uh, the time the drug czar came to Vancouver. All these stories are in there. 
Um, and, and 420. And 420, how that came to be, uh, how Skull and Bones started the CIA and became the biggest uh, drug dealers in the world. It's all in there. It's crazy, and man. for 60 bucks, you get 420 full color pages. So how, how did the project even come about? I mean, where did you get this this crazy ass idea, massive undertaking thing to do? Where did that even come from? When, what, how? Well, who, I, where, when, why, how? I was organizing something called the Herb School okay. back in 2004, mm -hmm. right after the decline got raided. Yep. And uh, oh, I'm so still, pass that. Yeah, I'll pass, pass it that around. around to there the crew you go, there. guys. Work on that one too. Thank you. So anyway, uh, the, the Decline got raided, and I was like, okay, let's do drug war history walking tours. And then they'll end up at a place where students who take the tour can buy pot. Now, if a couple of cops decide to go on a drug war history walking tour, I'll at least be able to bring all that history up in court, right? right? And maybe that'll keep them away. And <laughs> it worked for three years and four months. The cops stayed away, and they just let us deal willy-nilly. And uh, we actually got quite busy after about the second year. So much so that we, uh, we had our little three or four cabinet museum, uh, old medicine bottles and stuff right. like that. We got to expand that to a whole new location. That became the Herb Museum. Remember and it's still online, herbmuseum.ca. Yep. So, yeah, this uh, Herb School ended up teaching a lot of people. Uh, like, uh, because you had to go on the tour to get into the, by the, the herbs, right. uh, a lot of people ended up going on that tour. Mm -hmm. like, uh, sometimes 30 a day and that cool. thing lasted for years right so uh, we taught a lot of history we had grow classes by Bob High the artist right. he also is a, a master grower and he taught people how to grow and um, we sold a very high quality pot right next to the supervised injection site trying to encourage hard drug users to s switch, switch over, over to really good soft drugs yeah yeah and uh, that ended up well I think what happened was the police said to the guys at Insight, look, unless you file a complaint against these guys, we're going to shut you down because we saw your employees going in there and getting high. Mm -hmm. So they said, well, we don't want to get shut down. They filed a complaint and they raided. And uh, I did uh, four months at uh, Fraser Regional Correctional Center for that, where I learned all about the wonders of Gladiator School. But uh, no, it's good for a writer and advocate to understand prison from the inside. Mm -hmm. I used to actually work at the Edmonton Young Offender Center as a recreational therapist for kids. So I saw that, that from the perspective of the turnkey. And then I got to see it from the other side too for four months. And then I learned a lot. It came out of there and I, uh, I uh, began working on the comic book with Bob because we had to keep Bob busy. Yeah. And uh, he, I was being an art dealer and Bob was one of the most popular people, you know, aside from maybe Ken Foster and one right. or two others. Uh, Bob. Bob's art sold and so I became his art rep and we worked on the comic book just kind of on our spare time for 10 years for 10 years well after a while it got to the point where uh, it I wasn't going to be able to do it on my own but uh, by that time Don Brier had been buying so much Bob High artwork right. I managed <laughs> to convince him look let's do this mm -hmm. and get her done and it'll be, fa book. it'll be fantastic it's three quarters done let me just finish it Crazy. and uh, so he he backed me and uh, yeah, uh, this Don, guy right here. Don and Carol uh, have been so solid in their support oh, yeah, people. all these years. And so I, I want people to support them and thank them for getting all this history in a palatable format, in a way that it's easy to understand and, and, and is easy to read. It is, and it's a really great way to tell the story. We're actually using it for some of the reference for coming up 420 as well, you know, as well, too, which it covers in that. But going back on this, man, yeah, 25 years coming up. Wow, almost. Yikes. <laughs> it's all in there. The first 420 is in here. Is in there. Uh, and actually, there's an index where you there can is. That's right. look in the front and the inside where all the different chapters are all laid out. So easy navigation. You can look up whoever you want in the movement. There's 16 activists and uh, all the uh, most important, most fascinating, and most telling events in drug peace history in and Vancouver. And you got the John Conroy's, Chris Bennett's, yeah. Dana Larson's, uh, who else, of course, Bob High, the origins of 420. There's all sorts of Hillary Black in here, you, yeah. Marijuana Man, yeah. all kind of different people who are in this book, man. Yeah, There's a lot the of people. Don, of course, Carol in there as well, out. too. Like you said, a lot of people. Um, we, uh, 
we, of course, got the 420 coming up, which you're obviously a big part of and been around for a lot of years. And we'll I continue actually to be around. wasn't here for the first but 420. I was going to say, you weren't here for the first one. But I got here pretty <laughs> And wrote <laughs> pretty the soon story that. Was, about what happens with it the first. I was here for the third the 420. one. So that's pretty cool. A couple of few pages on that even as well, yeah, too. Yeah, but Bob was here for the first one. And he saw it actually live. And, that's uh, so cool. Yeah, it, it was uh, an interesting time. Because here's the thing about 420. And most people don't acknowledge this, but it's true. 420 is about teen pot smokers. Okay, they came up with the, it's after, it's code for after school. Right. And not after university either. It's code for after high school. Mm -hmm. And that's because pot is an excellent medicine to keep teens from committing suicide or dying of a hard drug overdose, like alcohol or opiates. Pot's great for that. Yep. And it, it keeps, like, when you're a teen, you're just handling these new things called hormones. You're usually bouncing off the walls. You could use a relaxant. And sometimes life doesn't always go as planned. And when, you know, when your first breakup or something like that, you're on the floor not moving because it hits you the hardest. And you could use a strong antidepressant that yep. might be able to put an, like you know, take the edge. Here, right yeah, here. so yeah. it's great teen <coughs> medicine. And, and the man has stigmatized teen pot use so much so that it's hard for even people to talk about. But 420 is a reminder. Pot's good teen medicine. Potfacts.ca, of course, you can get you a go. whole lot more over there. Exactly. All your questions, all this stuff. David, between Dana and David and K Dana's Cannabis History in Canada, this book over here, all the research you've got over there, and maybe Freddie Pritchard with his database on all the raids and shit, there is not many more places you need to go to to get all the facts, but definitely go to potfacts.ca and you can get all kind of information that you didn't even know you needed to know about yeah. cannabis. Yeah, if you have questions about pot and teens or pot and as a relaxant or antidepressant or pot as a fuel, cannabis hemp stocks could replace gasoline. We wouldn't have to die of oil wars, oil spills, yep. and climate destabilization. We could switch over to a natural economy. It's all there on potfacts.ca. You can learn everything I've learned over the last uh, 25, 30 years as a pot activist. You got these pot facts and all these questions you've asked. I ask everybody on my show four questions and you right. know different. Okay. Andrew, one, two, three, four, please. The four questions. Hopefully the video is... The four, four, four. four. Oh. oh, yeah, right, yeah, there you go. The Creamy Kale Smoothie. Everywhere you go, there's a smoothie bar or someone sipping on a protein Little out of order is what. See what had happened was, what what had, what had, what happened was, uh, I moved the favorite four this week, and so it, it screwed it up. Um, but anyway, there it is. Four questions. Uh, first of all, David, we obviously ask everybody these same ones here. Um, how, how and when, when did I get into weed? It's actually in Amsterdam Comics, in the David Mama Levine section. There you go. I can, can show you how I got into. Joint? I can show you how I got into weed, how I got my first joint, and everything. Uh, I was 14 at a time, and my 13-year-old friend Jamie was my best friend. Had got paid. Oh, here, can you hear? See that? Anyway, he got paid in weed for doing his paper route, and we decided to get high. And I laughed and laughed and laughed. And then he introduced me to Pink Floyd, and I knew. Yeah. From the first toke, I was a pothead because I, I liked feeling that good and I really liked how music sounded when I was high. There you go. I got the CBD dabs out here. We can oh, get you those before you leave as well, too. Question number two. Uh, question number two. Your preferred method of consumption when you do consume joints, blunts, dabs, bong tokes, edibles, what's your. Joints. Long ones so I don't have to, so I only have to roll one a day. Uh, and uh, I was going to say that answers your, my next question. How much do you consume? One a day? One oh, big one well, a day? these days, about one a day. You know, uh, before I started taking CBD drops, mm -hmm. I was taking like may maybe a joint like that would last me three or four days. But now I'm plowing through one a day. Good. 
Good, man. I know uh, you, I mean, you handle down at 420 what we call the green out zone as yeah, well. Yeah, they're handy. And, and you're one of those people who, who are kind of, little, as much as you, you know, support cannabis, sometimes it affects you in certain ways a little bit you more. You can than have too people, much right? of anything. Yeah. You can diet too much water. You can diet too much salt. You can eat 10 raw potatoes and die of that. You can eat half a cigar. That'll kill anyone on earth. But cannabis, you don't die. You just feel like shit. You're yeah. going to feel like dying, yeah. but you're not going to die. But yeah, you're going to throw so, up and get hot and sweaty. Well, you're going to feel like like death for half an hour, and then you're going to walk away. Yeah. But um, the nice thing about CBD drops is it handles all those overdose cases and gives people a powerful way yep. of not feeling so dizzy I or nauseous. Uh, and the fourth question is, is that of all of the bags you've ever consumed, all the weeds you've ever seen, does there, is there one that stands out as your most memorable of all time, the most like uh, f favorite bag, or one, if you never saw it again, the one that got away, what's yours? Well, oh geez, can I name three? Because sure, I used not. to be a pot dealer, and I used to be one of, the, one of the few in town, and I used to get a lot of crazy good weed. There was one called Hot Girlfriend. That only, they only sold by the half ounce, and it, it was incredible. It was just spindly stuff, but each bract was so sticky, stick to walls and ceilings and stuff. Then there was the poo, and it smelled like poo. And you could, unless it was, even in a jar, you could smell it through the jar. It was so <laughs> smelly. And then, of course, the Afghani bull rider. Yeah or the uh, Afghani blueberry, whatever, whatever you want to call, call it. it. Yeah. Al the Alchemist has some thoughts on what the bull rider actually is as well, too. So. Yeah, but, but I mean, <coughs> that was the only part. We got in, it in in such quantities that we could sell it and not just keep it amongst the staff. And, and I, I, it was really the only one that people called and asked for by name. Is it, you got any AB? Yeah, right. right. Seen, have you seen Abe? Mm-hmm. Well, I know a friend of mine who's any, uh, that's, another story for no not camp um uh with that uh what you should do is uh, go check out the event tonight of course as well to give them the plug for that again yes that would be at the flat spot skateboard shop at 112 east pender between six and eight tonight for the black light art party and book signing fancy damn comics book signing this comic right here bam doing it uh and of course to Appreciate you signing my copy. I yeah. just gotta get Bob to sign it. We got you and we got Dr. Well, Carol. he's there tonight. Next. You gotta come. Let's see what I can do when we get out of here after the show. Uh, of course, if you wanna follow along with Malmo, uh, you can find him generally on Facebook, and I think he has a Twitter account, but Instagram. Instagram. Over there as well. Oh, yeah, so hey, Malmo look, you, you got the uh, at Vansadam party uh, invite right there on my Instagram. See? Last one there. There you go. Click on that. Well, Bam. We, we click on that. I'm going to get ready for this because it is a dab time. We'll serve him up. And oh, we'll, good. Now, let's take that break for a second, Andrew. We'll be right back. Thanks for being here, David. Low-fat milk and one tablespoon of infused honey. And then blend that mixture until it's smooth and frothy. On a side note, you could also substitute frozen mango chunks and or infused maple syrup, or even infused tincture drops too if you'd rather. Anyway, after that, pour it all into a tall glass and drink it. Straws, of course, are optional. <laughs> 